Okay, so step one in working out a three liner, I'm going to make it's a boy um, on, over three lines. So what I did was I like wrote out the the letters and punctuation that I need for each line. Like so, I'm going to have it's on the top line. So I T apostrophe S, then leave a gap, and then ah, and then leave a gap, and then boy and then you've got a space underneath there and then use your number of folds chart and just go through and find um, how many folds each letter is so capital I so the first one's your capitals that's 18 so we're at 18 down and then lower T which is 26 apostrophe which is 16 and the lower S 33 and then A, 39, then capital B, 44, lowercase o, 37, lowercase y, 38. And then, so then you add up these numbers. So the top line is 93 folds. The middle line is only 39 folds. And the bottom line is 119. Now you need to double these fold numbers so you get the amount of numbered pages that you need so top line is 186 numbered pages middle is 78 bottom is 238 so the bottom is the highest number so that's the minimum amount of pages you need your book to be so so I need to find a book with at least 238 pages and also, because it's a three-liner, it needs to be 23 centimetres high. So these are the, the files that you um, get for the Brave and Bold Mini. There's four, there'll be four files altogether. There's the, the lowercase, the capitals, the numbers and punctuation and your number of folds chart which I showed you how to use in the previous step. So just go through with the lowercase. Now the first 28 pages is for the one liner measurements. So these are the ones that you use if you're just doing um, a normal one liner fold in your book so like just one word or name. Um, and then when you get to it's page 28 this is your two liner measurements and it'll say on the top of each page there it says two liner measurements um, and every page has this title as well so you you won't get mixed up with like your alphabets now with the two liner measurements so you've got the a for the top line and A for the bottom line and B and so on and the three liners start on page 55 so it says there in the, the pinky colour on each page three liner measurements and then you have the measurements for the top line the middle and the bottom so everything's all worked out for you so you just need to and make sure you use the right set of measurements for what you're making. So, um, on mine, so I'm doing it's a boy, the, the A is on the middle line, so I would use this middle set of measurements for the A. Now, I, I recommend not printing this all out because it's over 200 pages, so it's going to use like a lot of paper and a lot of ink, plus you you probably won't use or it will take you a very long time to use every single letter in every like combination so you can either print out the letters that you're going to be using so say you're doing the three liner and um, so I would print out like the capital I and then the lowercase t etc and um, all of them just of the three liner measurements so I would only print out this page for the the a, I wouldn't print out the one or two liner so this one 
So it says it it tells you up here which page it is, and also on the bottom of it there. So I would just pay, print out page fifty six on the printer um, for the A, and then go through um, and find the T, and then what whatever number that is, print that page out as well. Or what I usually do is I um, I work from the screen. Now I use it on the laptop because it's it's bigger. Um, and also if you click inside so so I'll be using the middle so I would click on the the fold column click on number one and I scroll it down to the bottom like that and then it's an extra way to make sure that I'm marking the right line so so I would mark this so mark 11 9 12 2 and then I use the down arrow and it goes down to fold two and then that's 11 6 12 5 mark that one press down and then it keeps you right so you're not going to um like lose track of where you are okay so i found a book for my it's a boy pattern it has 256 pages um, and the the highest number I needed was 238 so that's that's fine it doesn't have to be exact it, you you'll be very lucky when you, if you find um, the exact number of pages so you, it just means that you'll have a few extra either size or, or you can remove them at the end when you when you've finished so I need to work out um, the start pages for each line. Now you do them, you treat each line as an individual book when you're working out the start page. So, so my book has 256 pages. The top line needs 186, so minus 186, that leaves 70 pages. So to centralise it, I need the same amount of pages either side. So divide by two, and then that's page 35. So that's num page number 35. So top line starts on page number 35. The middle line only needs 78 pages. So 256 take away 78 is 178. Divide that by two. So page 89 is the start of the middle line. And the bottom, so 256, take 238, leaves 18. So divide that by two and your start page is page nine. So now we've got our start pages, we can start marking up. So the top line starts with the capital I for me. So I need to find page 35. So remember it's page number 35, we've, we've worked all that out with the, the numbered pages, not the folds. So then I find the capital I, so in the capital, um, capital file and in the three liner measurements, so I'm on, so that's page 66 for the letter I. So you need your ruler now and you have it one centimetre in from the edge. I've got um, a coffee stirrer, it sticks out one centimetre which is quite handy. So you just line that up with the corner. Uh, so my first set of measurements is 2328, so that's 2.3, 2.8. So you just do tiny little dashes. Um, one centimetre in from the edge and then that just makes it so when you've finished your fold you won't see any pencil marks and it doesn't damage the, the edges of the pages you want it to look as like as nice as possible so then the next page so fold two it's five four five nine so five four five nine 
And the next one is 2328. 2328. And so on. So I would so I would finish marking up the I. And then I need um, a lowercase t next. So then I would go to the lowercase file and then find the three liner measurements and then scroll down to the t. And then again, I'd be using the top line measurements. So that's page, page 74 for that one. So so, so then I start marking up straight after the I. I don't need to leave any space of pages for this alphabet. The um, the the space out on their own with the the serifs, unless you're doing um, something with all capitals, they may merge. Um, it just depends on which letters you're using because the serifs are obviously at the same height on each one. So like so they may merge, but it. So yeah, so you might need half folds if you're doing um, all capitals, but if you're using it like a normal, like you would normally write just capitals for the the first letter, uh, yeah, the first letter of the word, etc., then you're fine. So once I've marked up the top line, then I would then start the middle line. So the middle start number was page 89 so then I would go to page 89 and then I would get my A measurements which I actually printed off here so because right, so this is the A so it's the three liner measurements still make sure you use the right um, set and the A was the middle line, so I'm using this middle column for the A. So then I would just mark all this up. And then that's an easy middle line because it's only one letter. And then like move to the, the bottom, which so, so then I'd be back to page nine, start page. And then it would be, so capital B. So then I'd go to the capitals and then then the measurements would be down here for the for the boy. Okay, so I'll I'll come back once I've finished marking up. Okay, so I finished marking up my book and now it's time to do the, the cut lines. Now any of your pages that only have one set of marks don't cut those those ones are just folded like a normal one liner and that just saves um you having to fold back the half folds and it also helps bring in like the the pattern all together so you would go to your first set of pages with uh, more than one set of marks on and then once once you find that then you would mark out your cut lines so check um check your alphabet that you're using like this one the brave and mini brave and bold the three liner cut lines are at eight centimeters and 15 centimeters but they may be different for your it for a different alphabet so just check so eight centimeters 15 centimeters you can do these quite bold just so you you can find them among the text. And eight centimeters, fifteen centimeters. So you do a set like further into the book, and then a set at the end, set of marks, and then that helps you draw draw a straight line. Now you only need it around three inches in. You only cut in around three inches which is around seven and a half centimetres. But it, um, it doesn't have to be exact, but try and keep to the same depth either, each time. So that this book's 14 and a half centimetres. So I've just gone to six and a half to make it the seven centimetres. Because most most of your folds 
will fold easily with only that much cut. So then line up, line up the ruler with the two marks that you've made and then draw your line from the front to the um, the around the seven and a half, three inches mark. Now you can use um, scissors or you could use a craft knife. So I'll show you quickly with a craft knife first. I use a metal rule just so it doesn't um, take bits off of my ruler. <laughs> so you use the ruler, have it um, right straight on the line and then just stick the point of the craft knife in and then drag it along the ruler edge like use the edge of the ruler as a guide to keep the pressure on so it goes straight otherwise you'll end up with a wonky line and then line up with that one stick it in and then just push down and then that that cuts through quite a few in one go There's a couple there. If you have a couple that where it's not quite done it all the way to the end, just just use your knife gently to finish off the cuts. So that went through. One, two, three, four, five. So that's seven. That went through seven in one go. So you, you can get through your book quite quickly doing it that way. Or you can use scissors. So I'll mark up the page again. So eight centimetres, 15 centimetres, and then towards the front, eight centimetres. 15 centimetres and then if you just draw your line again not cutting all the way to the spine it gives you gives the book support still and um, because if if you cut all the way you could have pages falling out right so yeah you could use scissors and you could actually use kitchen scissors for this so you could get through quite a few pages at a time so you could do around like six or seven so three four five six so grab your pages make sure they're, they're all even make sure the corners like flush together and then just cut along the line like that and that's quite easy if you find it too hard with like the six or seven pages just take a couple out and um, you don't want to be wrecking your hands because <laughs> you've got quite a, a few to do okay so that's that's all you do really. Um, I'll finish cutting this and then I'll come back and show you the rest. Right, so I've finished the cutting and now it's time to start folding. Now you will have um, some pages with no folds on, uh, like no measurements. Um, there's a couple of ways you can deal with these. I'm going to show you one where you fold to a point. Now to make sure they're all at the same, that like you fold them all at the same point to make it all look nice and neat, if you mark the book halfway, so you just have one measurement on like whichever whichever line it is that you, you have the no folds. So because um, it's a three liner it's 23 centimeter book so the halfway point is 11 and a half centimeters on this one 
so you start folding you fold up in the top middle and bottom on each each page as you go that way you'll not rip any of the pages like you can't just fold the top and then go to the middle and the bottom and um, because you'll end up ruining the pages so fold to 90 degrees to your marks and then so this is the middle the point one with the no measurements the bottom make sure you're folding like directly on top of of your marks and then they don't show up after you've finished and it just makes it all look nice and neat and then you just keep going so just fold your top middle and bottom of each line a couple more so I can show you the, the line with the no measurements So then I've got the start of my letters and then the middle is going to have a line. It's going to make a nice neat line um, before you start um, folding the the, le the first letter on that line. So, and it, so it works like a frame and it can support your folds better. So it'll keep them like it'll keep them together instead of them splaying out. Right. Um, or the, the other way to do it is you can fold the page back. Now, with the three liner, um, like with the two liner, you can fold the whole thing just back in half towards the spine. But I find that's um, too deep for the three liner because everything's obviously brought forward on the three line. Like if you see there, it's only a couple of centimeters in. So having those all the way back there, it, it just, it doesn't look right. So you can fold, if you fold this in like two centimeters and then that also creates a kind of um, frame, but like in inverted in. The, the easiest way to make sure that they're all the same, like all folded in the same um, amount is by using a piece of card if you you measure your book so this one is 15 centimeters so then take two centimeters off of that and cut your card to that so mine is 13 centimeters wide so then you just slot that in and then fold it over and then you just so just keep going like that with the with the ones with no measurements on. So you fold your top and bo bottom the normal or whichever whichever lines it is, and then the ones with no folds just fold over the card. And that's what I did with this one. And you can see it they're just folded back like in a little. So just went through. 
So as I was folding, so I, did, I folded my top and my bottom and then stuck the card in and then just fold it over and then just keep going like that. Um, if there is any that are slightly out more, like there's a couple there that are sticking out just slightly more, it's because it's where there's um, a new set of pages has been stuck in. So they're, they're not as far back. So if you just go through... You can adjust those manually and just pull it back a tiny bit and then crease it down. And then that just makes it look neater. Okay, so um, also at the, the front and the back, you're going to have pages with just one set of measurements on. And if they're at the top or the bottom line, then you're not going to be able to get um, a 90 degree angle on one of the folds. So what you do is you fold it as close to the spine as you can. I'll show you on a, another page. So I'll just fold that like that. So fold it to the spine up there. Make sure it's lined up with your mark down here. If you keep hold of it, here with your hands and then it um it helps keep it in the right place and then just crease it along there and then you've got this little bit overlapping so you fold that over so it's away from the spine and then you can either gently tear it off or or you can cut it off with some scissors or a craft knife and it depends on the the page sometimes the paper does tear quite easily but others it it doesn't and it can rip rip even more off than what you intended so so yeah that depends on the book and then yeah so that's that's how you do the um the folds that don't won't go to 90 and that's how you do a three liner <laughs>